It's called a health food. Doctors recommend it, nutritionists recommend it. We've been taught to consume it, it's good for us. But what's the real deal with farmed salmon? If you value your health, you will spend the 20, 30 minutes and watch this video and not ever, ever, ever eat farmed salmon again. Check out my special guests I have. Hello everybody, Marcus here. I am so excited today. Um, I have a special guest with me, Don Staniford from Scotland. I um, have been, had emails with Don for over a year now and we have finally connected to do a video. And um, Don is uh, one of the guys who's out there um, fighting against farmed salmon. Most of you know, if you've been to my restaurant, that I have not served farmed salmon and we've never served farm salmon at my restaurant. It's been well before my restaurant. I've never even touched the stuff. And if you watched my videos, seen my YouTube, you'll know that I'm very vocal about farmed salmon and why not to serve it. And now Don is, it's got some great credentials. He is in Scotland. And Don, I'm gonna let you take over with the issues of Scottish salmon, particularly um, salmon overall, just farm salmon overall. One of the things here in New York I know is we see a lot of organic farm salmon on menus. I know the Faroe Islands is sort of near you, uh, north of you. There's a lot of Faroe Island push and organic Scottish salmon. Um, talk to us about mortality, finances. Talk to us about, talk about what you want to talk to us about, how people can find you, first of all, um, on your websites. Yeah, I'm Don Staniford with Scottish Salmon Watch. Uh, you can find me at scottishsalmonwatch.org. Uh, we also have a uh, salmonpledge.org. This is where people can uh, do video pledges and pledge not to eat uh, farm salmon. So when you see uh, salmon in a supermarket, 99% of it, certainly Atlantic salmon, is from farm. This is battery factory farming. They cram this, this king of fish. In Latin, salmo salar means the leaper. So this is a fish that in the wild leaps up waterfalls. It swims thousands of miles across the open ocean. Yet they're cramming this uh, king of fish in cages, in battery cages. They can get infested with sea lice. So this, this leaper has been turned into a leper with, with uh, parasites that burrow into the flesh of the uh, the flesh of the fish, you've got these sea lice uh, parasites uh, called, um, uh, the, 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 they precipitate death's crowns in, in the head of the, the farm salmon. They burrow literally into the, the head of the fish. Through free information, we've accessed extremely gruesome photographs of farm salmon inside cages. Uh, we've got video evidence. So we've uh, kayaked out to salmon farms with a GoPro camera and put our camera in the water and you can see for yourselves. So basically when you're buying a salmon product, check the label, ask the restaurateur, ask the chef, ask the supermarket manager where it comes from and look behind this glossy labeling, this deceptive marketing and just ask how was it farmed, what chemicals were used in the production. So we know on Scottish salmon farms, they use emamectin benzoate, they use deltamethrin, they use azimethophos. These are chemicals that peer-reviewed science has shown are, are lethal to shellfish. So they're killing off the sea seabed. This is the silent spring of the sea. And then if you look on a, from a welfare point of view, you know, cramming this king of fish into cages is like turning it into a couch potato. It's fatty. If you look at the the white lines. So if you if you look on the um, the flesh of the the salmon in a supermarket, you can see white lines. Turn over the label and it says 15, 16% fat. That's fattier than pizza. So people who, you know, you see all these celebrities, Barack Obama and you know Rihanna, they talk about eating salmon as part of a healthy diet, but it's not healthy at all. Farm salmon is not healthy. Wild Alaskan salmon, wild Pacific salmon is healthy. So farm salmon is a poor choice for the environment. It's a poor choice for welfare and it's a poor choice for human health. It's contaminated with PCBs, dioxins. These are cancer causing chemicals. So we should stop buying the stuff. I wouldn't touch it with a barge pole. And then there's the artificial colorings in farm salmon. If it, 
farm salmon are unappetizing gray in color and they have to add this canthat xanthan, this pink dye. Uh, so however you look on it, it's a poor choice. Right, so you mentioned sea lice. If I'm not mistaken, every farm has sea lice outbreaks, correct? Yeah, you know, I, I've got two young kids and they sometimes come back from school with head lice. You know, if you're cramming people into confined spaces, you're going to get disease, you're going to get coronavirus, you're going to get bird flu, whatever it is, uh, humans, animals. It's the same thing with battery factory salmon farming. You've got maybe a million salmon uh, in cages in these battery conditions. You're seeing news reports at the moment with um, millions, hundreds of thousands of um, farm sa salmon dying in, in Iceland, in Norway, in Scotland. And the common denominator is this battery factory system of farming. So you get these sea lice parasites, you get uh, amoebic gill disease. That's, so that's, uh, you get uh, chlamydia, piscine chlamydia in the gills. You get um, cardiomyopathy syndrome, which is a heart disease. You get lesions, um, piscine reovirus, which is decimated. Um, salmon farms across the world. So wherever you look at it, whether it's in Chile, in the Faroes, in Iceland, in British Columbia, Norway, Scotland, Ireland, Tasmania, New Zealand, you've got the same problems. The diseases might be different, the chemical names might be different, but the problems are exactly the same. It's a function of overproduction and high stocking densities. So now um, somebody's going to say, well, no, 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 I buy organic salmon don so my my salmon i'm buying is organic what do you say to somebody who says that um well pardon my french but that's complete bollocks you know uh, we have a phrase in english called cod's wallop you know that's just absolute baloney um organic standards uh rspca welfare standards aquaculture stewardship standards uh, they're just not worth the paper they're written on. They're so close to conventional farming. This is greenwashing. This is welfare washing. This is a, a fig leaf. If you go behind the, the certification, behind the label, it's still exactly the same. This is organic scam and it's not you know, wild salmon. If it's not wild, don't buy it. They try and package it. You know, the, the, there's a fairy tale by Hans Christian Andersen called The Emperor's New Clothes. You know, and, and when you go, but you know, behind that, he's completely naked. It's the same with salmon. It's a complete fairy tale. It's a scam. It's a sham. It's a consumer con. So now people say, well, no, no, Don, I'm buying salmon that's low density farmed. What do you say to those people? Because, you know, that's one of the marketing ploys that these companies use. To, I'm a chef and I have these companies coming. They don't come to me anymore. Sometimes I'll see them at food shows and this and that, and they'll tell me how great their salmon is. And one of the terms they use is, oh, no, ours is low density. What does low density really mean? I don't know. You know, but instead of a bathtub of water for each farm salmon, it might be two bathtubs or even a swimming pool full of water. But you're still cramming a migratory species. This is the king of fish. This is the albatross of the ocean. This migrates across thousands of miles to its feeding grounds and back again. It's the leaper up waterfalls, but on a farm, it's crammed at these very high stocking densities. Um, we should not be farming salmon. Uh, Dr. Rosalind Naylor from the Stanford University in California wrote a paper called um, Salmon Farming is Like the Tiger of the Sea. We don't farm tigers. Uh, on land because it's biological nonsense. But with farming these top level carnivores, these top level predators like salmon and tuna and cod, uh, that, that went bust, um, we're farming them in, in open net cages and it, it doesn't make any sense at all. But common sense is not a currency some of these big multinationals are used to dealing in. This is a predominantly Norwegian foreign controlled industry. 99% of Scottish salmon is controlled by six foreign-owned multinationals. Uh, the same uh, true in, in British Columbia and in different jurisdictions around the world. This is, you know, you've got corporations like Mitsubishi, which is uh, owned Cermak. Some of the first farms in Washington uh, state were Union Carbide, British Petroleum, um, Unilever. These are big companies that have been associated with salmon farming. So this is not a small family fish farming operation. This is a multinational industry and they're producing a factory battery product. 
and they're trying to pass it off as this luxury product. If you go to a wedding, um, you might see salmon on the menu. That's because it's the cheapest item um, on, on any menu, but people still think um, that this is this wild a product, but, but it's an imposter, it's a fake. So now, um, what about this, what about this, this, when they say, well, they don't, we don't feed them antibiotics because sometimes they tell us, well, there's no antibiotics in this stuff. Um, they use antibiotics in large quantities in Chile still in Norwegian salmon farming. They have drastically reduced the use of antibiotics, but they use huge quantities of antiparasitics like MMX, actin benzoate, delta methrin, azimethafos, and they're also uh, the lice have now become chemically resistant to these toxic parasiticides. So they're now using uh, what they call mechanical treatments. These are kind of like Heath Robinson contraptions, torture chambers for fish. They literally hoover up the fish in a pipe and it goes through a heated washing machine called a thermolyser. So that causes huge welfare problems and mass mortalities in Scotland and Norway. So however uh, the industry try and look for solutions, another can of worms, another problem happens. They, they're caught between the devil and the deep blue sea. And however you look at it, this is a net loss. It's a false economy. And people as consumers, we have a power. We can stop buying this stuff. So we're asking people to take the salmon pledge to say, don't buy farm salmon. And you can find out more at salmonpledge.org. I don't feed it to my family. My, my, my four-year-old and six-year-old are on the website saying they don't want to go near farm salmon. We've educated them. And there's a famous bumper sticker. If you visit Alaska, lots of the fishermen drive around with a bumper sticker that says, friends don't let friends eat farm salmon. So don't just educate your own family, tell your friends. And you know, just like the salmon farming industry itself, let, let's let this boycott campaign go viral because they're spreading a noxious toxic product and they're marketing it at this healthy healthy product but it's full of diseases if you look at the reports coming from scotland that we've managed to access through freedom of information you, you you can't be anything other than shocked at the the the, the mortality rate is 20 to 25 percent if people I want to talk about that the the farm and they have cows dead with the with their feet sticking up in the air or pigs or sheep just dead, decimated across the field, they would be shocked. They would be horrified. There'll be a public outcry. But because it's out of sight, out of mind, it's under the water, people can't see this. So that's why the GoPro camera and video secret filming is very important. This is the, so you said a key point, mortality. So focus, explain to people what mortality is um, you said 20 to up to 25% in Scotland, correct? Yeah. Now, every every area has a mortality rate. People people don't understand this. Now, what happens with these dead salmon? What happens in the bays? Do, do, do things get polluted? So what happens when you have this die-off of, of 100,000 fish? What happens to that, to that bay, to that ecosystem? Uh, where do the fish go? What happens? Uh, waste pollution is a huge problem. You've got Sea Shepherd visited Eastern Canada recently, um, late 2019. Their, their report's on CBC, and there should be more information coming out about that. But these mass mortalities, they can spread diseases and parasites. The mortalities themselves, the carcasses, the dead fish, are transported off the farm. We've got shocking, nauseating video footage I climbed up. The, the ladder on the side of the skip with TV cameras from French TV and Latvian TV and other documentary makers. And we've got the videos on our website. You can link at the end of this video. Um, don't watch the videos on, on a full stomach because it's really disturbing. You can see the, the carcasses, the, you can't obviously smell it from the video, but uh, you, you can just, just see the devastation and the disease and the deformities in these farm fish. But that's one in four, one in five farm salmon are dying. If that was a terrestrial uh, livestock animal like a pig or a sheep or a cow, it just wouldn't be tolerated. But fish, um, they're not cuddly. You know, people might not think that they have the same levels of pain and sentience, but scientific research shows that fish do. And this is the king of fish, the, the Salmo salar. 
the Atlantic salmon that we're talking about. You know, there's obviously Pacific salmon as well that are farmed, but we should not be farming these creatures at such high densities. It's morally repugnant. It's ethically bankrupt. It's environmentally bankrupt. And you can change the industry by not buying farm salmon. But Don, am I not, aren't we saving the wild population? Because what people say, well, I'm saving the wild population by eating farmed salmon. Um, we have various stickers, but one of them is, is salmon farming is a net loss. So uh, Dr. Daniel Pauly of the University of British Columbia, he puts it best. Uh, he said, we're, we're robbing Pedro to pay Paul. We're, we're uh, fishing down the food chain and farming up the food chain. So what that means is we're draining our world's oceans for wild fish for use in salmon farms. So salmon are carnivores. They're at the top of the food chain. So they're like gas guzzling Ferraris. They require a lot of energy input. So far from being a panacea, they're actually a pariah. They're draining our world's oceans of wild fish and we're running out of wild fish to, to feed to these farms. So the industry are now, um, that they're going down to Antarctica and they're, they're looking to use krill, uh, which obviously steals that precious food commodity from the mouths of penguins and whales and whole ecosystems. And then we've got the industry looking to source um, land animal protein. So salmon farms use chicken feathers, for example, in various jurisdictions. And then Monsanto and Cargill, the, the genetically modified giants, they want to use genetically modified soy and vegetables in farm salmon. So this is, again, this is a commodity. This is a factory battery industry. When you see salmon, 99% of it will be farmed unless it's advertised as wild. Thankfully, when, I, when we go on holiday, um, my, my wife's Canadian, we go to the, the West Coast, Seattle and British Columbia, you can still buy wild salmon in restaurants, in supermarkets. But when you go uh, into the Midwest or most of the, in America and Europe, it, it's all farmed, it's fatty, it's flabby, it's artificially coated. You can see it, the, the white lines, the flesh, it doesn't look healthy, yet it's marketed as a healthy product. So... As a chef myself, I have these companies that just keep hitting me up saying how great their farm salmon is. But now here's the other side. Chefs, some, some of the best chefs out there just don't know the difference. They, they think because they hear the word Atlantic, um, whether these are famous chefs that I've spoken to or the chef around the corner at a pub, they're falsely advertising wild salmon when it's really farmed salmon. And this drives me crazy. So... I always educate people saying, you know, farm, wild salmon is only in season, basically in the summertime, a little before summer, a little after summer, and the summer's prime season. You have restaurants offering it year round. And this is what I tell, this is what I tell patrons. You ask that chef, if it's December or April or March, you say to the chef, is that, was that previously frozen? And when they say no, you've got problems. You've got major problems because it's not in season. Sure, there might be a little bit of ocean catch, troll kings in the middle of December, but it's not making it to the mainland U.S. It's not, if Pike Place Market doesn't have it, fresh, available, it pretty much doesn't exist. Pike Place gets it first. The local villages up in Alaska might get, some, might, might get some stuff too. But all across America, you see these chefs just misleading people. So we can't trust what a menu says. As a consumer, you have to question, question, question. If you don't like the right answer, do not trust the chef. Doesn't matter if it's a celebrity chef or not. A lot of them will mislead you. I have some of the some celebrity chefs on recording saying how they're serving wild Atlantic salmon in their restaurant in the middle of January and this and that. And these are famous New York restaurants are telling me this to my face or on the phone. And it's crazy and insane. So um, let's talk about what the real wild population of salmon actually is in Scotland or Norway. Is it available? Are there runs? How much is available when it's out there? What is the price of it? Um, just to go back a second, there was a Consumer Reports and the New York Times, Marion Burris, you know, over the last decade has featured this, this false fraud labeling issue. And I, I, I'm not sure that Food and Water Watch have produced reports, but a lot of the, the, 
wild salmon that you see on sale in New York uh, restaurants and in U.S. supermarkets it is is farm salmon passed off as wild. So that this is documented, and what you say is true. Um, in terms of Scotland, wild salmon is is pretty much extinct, especially on the west coast of Scotland. You've got maybe catches of seventy thousand fish, a hundred thousand fish, um, but that's dwarfed by the farm salmon population, which is maybe 30, 40, 50 million. Uh, so you've got maybe a million farm salmon um, in, in each farm, half a million on the smaller farms. So this is a battery factory product. So when you're talking about Scottish salmon, you're not talking about wild salmon. When you talk about Norwegian salmon, you're not talking about wild salmon. You're talking about factory battery uh, farm salmon. We've got a, a a report called Scottish Scammon. You can find out more at scottishscammon.co.uk. Uh, and we analyzed uh, how this industry, and it, it's the Sal Mafia. Um, the European Fraud Agency has gone into these Norwegian companies and investigating them for price fixing. The US government has done the same with some of these Norwegian companies. There's various class action lawsuits uh, on price fixing. So this is a multinational industry. You know, you just follow the Sal money and you'll get to the Sal monopoly. There was a brilliant documentary by Wilfred Hoosman in Germany about 10 years ago called Sal monopoly. And that's exactly what's happened. These Norwegian companies have come in and they've uh, taken the market and they're deceiving consumers on this image, this false image of a wild salmon, but it's a factory battery product so don't be duped don't be deceived and just question and if if you don't get the right answer as you say don't buy the stuff if it doesn't say wild it's not wild if it says organic it's farmed if it's stamped with all sorts of green stamps you have to be extremely skeptical because those um certification systems are not worth the paper they're written on so i've i uh, made a video a couple years ago about Verlasso salmon, which is farmed in Chile. Because so I noticed that the Monterey Bay Aquarium Seafood Watch rated them as a better choice. And I'm shaking my head and saying, how can a farm salmon get elevated up? So I called Verlasso and or I actually, I actually called Monterey Bay Aquarium and spoke to somebody in the Seafood Watch department high up. And I said, what is this? How, wh what's going on here? It turns out they're genetically modifying fungus to feed the fish, which means they're not depleting the ocean of so-called wild stocks of fish. But I said to them, I said, what are the criteria you're going by? Like, like what, uh, they go, that's it. That's the only criteria we're taking is the food account. And I'm saying, well, this is just regular old farm salmon. This is like even one of the best, most, what I think might be one of the most prestigious seafood watches out there because people use Monterey Bay Aquarium seafood watch. They have the app, they use it, they trust it for years. They've made a statement way on early about, 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 about for the consumer how to buy better fish. And now the consumer says, wow, there's a farm salmon on the list here. And other farm salmons make it in there too as well. Um, but you know, you have to do the research here. You just can't take for word what people are telling you, what a chef is telling you, what a what, what an advocate group is telling you. I mean, it, it was insane when I found that out. I said, so that's the only criteria. They said, well, that's it. I said, are the fish getting sick? What's the density? Like, what's going on? What's the mortality rate? They couldn't answer any question, but it's getting fed, genetically modified. And I said, well, what's what's the long-term effects of this genetically modified fungus? We don't know. We're not, we're just, we're just only rating the food source, the food supply. And that's it. So if you're a chef out there and what is your advice to a chef? Is there a good documentary? Is there a good website? How could a chef educate himself on scamming, on farm salmon? Uh, well, just on your points, I, I, I went to the cinema the other night and um, there was a trailer for a new Mark Ruffalo film about DuPont, how it contaminated the water supply. And that, that, that's probably in cinemas in the US now. Um, but I think consumers and chefs and uh, people in supermarkets should be very wary when these chemical companies like DuPont and Monsanto and Cargill are controlling our food supply. If you take Velasso salmon, that was, that was a venture that they went in with DuPont. This is a, a huge chemical company. If you, if you do the research about Velasso salmon, 
that's basically your DuPont uh, product, a DuPont creation. So you've got Monsanto and Carga looking to supply the genetically modified feed to go into farms. Sammy, you've got Aqua Bounty that I think has a land-based system in Indiana and has it tried Panama, it tried Scotland, it tried New Zealand. So you've got these big GM giants trying to get into our food system. So if, if I had any advice for chefs or, or consumers, it would be just, just avoid this battery factory product. This is, it's, it's a fake product. This is a, this is a fish with a fake tan. You know, this is cosmetically challenged. Um, and you know, if you can't put lipstick on a pig, you know, they're trying to deceive people just by the artificial colorings. And then if you go into it further, um, the flesh of the farm salmon is contaminated with PCBs and dioxins. Ironically, those are in our ecosystem by accumulating through companies like Monsanto. So we have kind of contaminated our food, food supply. So go wild, support wild fishermen, look for a seasonal food product. And what I'm saying about salmon, you could apply to other food systems. We've lost the right to have salmon all year round. And for the housewife or the house husband in Arkansas going into Walmart, you should not be feeding your family on this cheap contaminated farm salmon product that might be coming from Velasco in Chile or, or, or markets, uh, factory farms around the world. And this Norwegian salmon, the Scottish salmon is flooding US markets. Uh, yeah, it's, it's contaminated, it's causing environmental contamination and it's a welfare nightmare. So now I was speaking with Bill, Bill Bryden a couple months ago and he was talking to me about in the summertime, last summer, this was, I guess it was last summer, um, the, just the mortality rates in that bay where he's from and the stench. And he said the, all the rocks, all the shore was coated with all that fat from the salmon. So the salmon were dying, mass, mass die-offs. The salmon was just sitting in the pens. They couldn't get it out quick enough. And the whole the whole beach, the whole shore, all the rocks were just coated with this, this oily film that just was this god-awful odor. Is that happening in, I've seen videos in Scotland where something similar like that is happening as well. Uh, yeah, we're just looking at a case involving Scottish sea farms. This is a Norwegian owned company by Leroy and Salmar. They put 380,000 fish into a salmon farm in Loch Spelvey on the Isle of, of Mull near Oban, and only 24,000 fish were harvested. So you don't need to be a rocket scientist or a mathematician to that. No, that's a, a low percentage. That's 6%. So 6% made it to market and 94% uh, were I, I either killed or cold and yet that company didn't bother to tell the Scottish government didn't tell didn't bother to tell the fish health inspectorate when the government is notified they send in disease inspectants to to test the fish to see if it's got infectious salmon anemia or PC and rare virus to see what's going on but these Norwegian owned companies are having mass mortalities and they're clearing the dead bodies this is a classic cover-up they're trying to get rid of the evidence and uh, it goes to incinerators and landfill and gets taken away in trucks or even uh, well boats back to Norway in some cases. So this is a, this is a bankrupt industry. And the more you look at this, uh, the, the bigger and deeper uh, the can of worms. And that's why we've employed uh, GoPro cameras where we've gone into farms and taken footage because we need to ground truth this. Alexandra Morton and First Nations in British Columbia and Mikkel Froden uh, in Norway has taken video footage as well as Corin Smith in Scotland. And if you look at that video evidence, and that's, that's been on CBC, it's been on uh, Norwegian and Swedish TV, it's been on the BBC as well. If you look at that video evidence, you can see the problems and then compassion over killing. They went into a salmon farm in Maine, just, just north of you, um, owned by Cook Aquaculture. And they produced a horrific secret video report from from welfare abuse inside this farm in Maine, this hatchery in Maine. So it goes on around the world. So the more you look at this, and I've been studying this for, for maybe 25 years, the more I'm horrified and shocked. And I get quite evangelical about spreading the message. And it's, it's so great that 
you've got guardians like yourself, gatekeepers into the food industry, championing, championing wild fish and saying people should not be buying farm fish. So Cook Aquaculture, that name comes a lot because they have a company called True North that is really strong here in New York. I think there's a big celebrity um, TV personality that has backed that. And um, she takes videos of her out there in her boat off of the, off the coast of Maine saying how great this stuff is. And it's, it's, they have such deep pockets that they can, they can pay these, these celebrities. They have month sponsorship money. And when we look at these people on TVs, these famous people, we're like, wow, well, they're eating it and they're supporting it. And it's just, it's absurd and insane what's happening. And Cook Aquaculture, um, their True North label is, 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 is one of those labels that, that chefs just gravitate towards here. I'm getting ready to go to a food show um, in New York City here next month. And a lot of those companies are going to be there. They're going to be lined up, sitting there preaching why all their stuff is good. And they might have a picture of a celebrity chef behind them. Um, you know, and the celebrity chefs vary uh, from across the board here. And it, it's literally insane. Um, so, well, this is like these celebrities in the 1950s, 60s, endorsing smoking, you know, cigarettes when the big tobacco companies knew the problems. But it's quite appropriate that Martha Stewart, someone that's been to prison, um, is promoting cook aquaculture. The, the joke in the eastern uh, Canada and the eastern US is that this is a company that should add an R to its name. It should be called Crook, not Cook. So I think that's very appropriate. If you look at these labels and you look at the farm salmon, this is a sham, it's a scam, it's a consumer con. This, this is a fraud. And we've taken cases um, on consumer fraud with, with false labeling. You've now got these price fixing investigations on both sides of the pond, both sides of the Atlantic in Europe and in the US. And you've got um, suggestions, allegations that these companies, these Norwegian companies have been price fixing and committing fraud. And so this is the type of the industry you're dealing with. And they're certainly not to be trusted. And the more that they need celebrity endorsement, the more they need marketing, the, the worse the product in, in my experience. I find that true as well. So I have one last question. So you mentioned the Rio virus. You mentioned, you mentioned these, 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 these things that the salmon get. What's the chances of going to the store and buying farm salmon that are contaminated with? with these viruses? Um, Alexandra Morton has gone into salmon uh, supermarkets in, in North America and bought farm salmon. And it, I think maybe 80% of the salmon uh, tested uh, in supermarkets, tested positive for PC and Rio virus. Marine uh, Science Scotland, over 50% of the salmon they tested uh, in farms, tested positive for PC and Rio virus. NRK, which is like the BBC or CBC in, in Norway, the state broadcaster, they've done reports on various um, viruses and pathogens in salmon on sale in supermarkets. So when you're buying this healthy product, it's not healthy at all. It's disease ridden. And would you buy a beef product, a chicken product, a sheep product, if you, if you knew that was infected with viruses, with pathogens. And this is, it's just a, a, a scam because they, they know uh, these fish are contaminated with viruses and pathogens and bacteria. In Scotland, we can see and read the, the fish health inspector reports, the post-mortems, the testing, and they're riddled with amoebic gill disease, with cardiomyopathy syndrome, PC and rear virus, salmon, uh, gill pox virus. Uh, so, you know, if you buy farm salmon, if you choose to buy that, it's like it coming with a side order of viruses and pathogens and disease. Um, and chemicals. Yeah, you, you get more than you bargain for. It's cheap, it's nasty, it leaves a bad taste in the mouth. You know, just don't buy the stuff. If you go to our website, salmonpledge.org, you can see lots of people and we'd love you, Marco, to do a... Um, a video My <laughs> pleasure. as well Love to. and Love anyone to. else um and we're just encouraging people to take the pledge don't buy farm salmon
Great. So I, I have a I have a couple of videos out where I say because lots of farm to table is now the new the new buzzword. A lot of restaurants claim they're farm to table, and I say there's one farmed product a farm to table restaurant should not have, and that's farmed salmon. And I really hit home on that point. Um, so now before we end here, is there anything that you want to say? Anything else that that the public needs to know? Um, you can if you want to do your own homework, and it's always useful to do. Due diligence in terms of Scottish salmon, we've got Scottish salmon uh, watch.org. Uh, you can Google me and I've got a blog. Uh, we've got salmonpledge.org. We've got scottishscammon.co.uk. Uh, there's Alexandra Morton and Sea Shepherd in, in British Columbia. There's the Green Warriors of Norway. There's um, Juan Carlos Cadenas Icaranos in Chile. You've got groups, Environment Tasmania down in Australia, groups in New Zealand. They're, they're saying exactly the same thing. And what is immensely powerful, and you've got groups in Maine and Eastern Canada as well, trying to fight fish bombs. What's immensely powerful is sharing information and these communities rising up against salmon farms. And it's the common denominator is the same. You've got open net cages discharging untreated effluent that can contain toxic chemicals and viruses and pathogens directly into the ocean. There's impact on cetaceans, killing of seals. However you look at it, it's, right. it's draining our world's oceans and it's producing a product that's not healthy. So don't buy it, don't fall for it, rise up against salmon farms and don't buy the product. So there, there's a few things we didn't talk about. We'll save it for another, another video because um, we didn't talk about the mammals that are involved, the, the killing off of things. We didn't, we didn't really talk about salmon being a keystone species. There's, we didn't talk about the, the bottom of the ocean floor. We didn't talk about any of this kind of stuff, which we'll talk about next time. Um, this is a great start. I'd love to have you on many more times, especially as current news comes up. And just keep educating and hitting home to people that this is such a bad choice for your family, for restaurants, for the environment, for the people living in these communities all over the world where these farms are. Um, I hear stories all the time from them. They email me, um, how do I get these salmon farms out of here? What's going on? I, you know, there's more than we bargained for. Um, and you know, our environment, lobster fishermen have, have emailed me. I've done interviews with lobster companies saying they destroyed everything in these bays, all the chemicals they put in for the lice. Um, so let's do more videos let's keep educating um people I, we will definitely link you here how people can find your websites and follow you and um this is really really informative don thank you very very much i'm glad we finally got to connect um i appreciate it and we will definitely do more and more content and more education thank you thank you very much